Welcome to JDesigner Tutorial 1, Basic Skills, Part 1. Let us begin by building a simple network. This network will comprise of four molecular species and three reactions. The first thing to do is add the nodes that represent the molecular species. Click on the Add Node button, move the mouse to the drawing area, and click on the left mouse button to draw four nodes on the canvas. Once you've completed this, click on the Pointer button. This prevents you from dropping any further nodes onto the canvas. To change the properties of a node, Right click over the node and select the properties menu item. This will bring up the node properties dialog box and from here you can change a variety of things including the name of the node, its initial concentration, and its status as a boundary condition. In our example, set the concentration of the first node to 10 units. Close the properties window by clicking on the red close button at the top right corner. We are now ready to add some reactions. On the left side toolbar you will see 9 different reaction types. These range from simple uni-uni to tri-tri reactions. We will add three uni-uni reactions to the model. These reactions will go from the first node to the second to the third and to the fourth. To add the first reaction, select the uni-uni button. This is the first reaction button. Select the reactant by clicking on node 0, then click on the product node 1. Proceed to do this for the other two reactions. Once you have finished, make sure that you unselect the reaction button by clicking on the arrow. By default, JDesigner assigns a simple irreversible mass action rate law to every reaction. You can check this by right clicking over a reaction arc and selecting the properties item. From this panel, you can change things like the name of the reaction, its stoichiometry, and the reaction rate law. You'll notice that the reaction by default has been assigned a simple first order mass action rate law. Note also that the rate constant has been assigned a default value of 0.1. As an exercise, set the rate constant for the first reaction to 0.6. Set the rate constant for the second reaction to 1.0. Set the rate constant for the third reaction to 0.15. We are now ready to carry out a simple time course simulation. The simulation will show the pathway undergoing a transition as mass flows out from the first node to the other nodes in the pathway. First, close the reaction properties window to leave more room on the screen. To run a simulation, go to the horizontal toolbar and select the analysis button, choosing time course simulation. Then, select the viewer button and choose graphical output. You can carry out a simulation immediately by simply clicking on the run button that you see in the time course panel. Let us do the simulation again, but this time over a longer period. By default, simulations are run from 0 to 10 units, but we can change the end time by simply entering a new value. Here, set the time to 30 units. In order to repeat the simulation, we must also reset the simulation to its initial condition. The sizes of the various panels on the screen can be changed. For example, you can make the graph panel larger by moving the splitter bar up and down. This concludes Part 1 of Tutorial 1. In Part 2, we will learn to set reaction rate loss, obtain raw data, set boundary conditions, and analyze steady state conditions.